Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, it's guitar show season. Just in case you don't know, all across the country, there are big meetings and greetings where vendors all come together, sell each other their stuff, sell showgoers their things as well. So this is the season where you see a lot of inventory start moving. So if you're in the market for something, maybe see if one of these shows is around you. Sometimes they can be a lot of fun if you're looking for something rare. But a viewer of the show named Bill recently went to the Arlington Guitar Show, which is like the big Mac daddy of them all. And just like in this episode, he shared some photos of what he saw. To kick off the show, take a look at this really sweet 56 Les Paul reissue done up in a flip-flop finish. I actually saw this one get listed on Reverb, and I wasn't all that impressed with it, but looking at it in person at this guitar show was just fantastic. That has a really awesome color change effect. When people say PRS wasn't first to do it in the guitar world, they're technically correct. They're just the ones that caught the attention of the entire world doing it. So now some of these older ones are starting to gain traction. We have a 2017 Gibson Firebird. I don't remember these things being $3,500, but then again, I wasn't really paying attention to Firebirds back then. So that was there for somebody looking for a Firebird. Most importantly, this is the Steinberger tuner version. So it has the correct style headstock, but you don't have to worry about the giant banjos. So as far as Firebirds go, yeah, that's a desirable one. Looks like we have some sort of a 70s Stratocaster in the background. Looks like Eric Ernest was at this show. We talked about these double necks of his before. He had them on reverb at one point in time, but I think he took them down. But that's a pretty cool 2012, like almost root beer-esque finish right there. Looks like it says Siberian Tiger Stain. A nice one of the VOS Budokan Les Pauls. You don't find those for sale publicly too often. I was recently actually offered one of the aged versions, which was tempting, but I decided to keep my other signature guitar. But if anybody's interested in a really unique serial number one, feel free to reach out. Maybe we can work a three-way trade on it. Looks like Eric just brought out all the good stuff. I can't believe he would bring Mr. Clean out to a show. The reason that one's so expensive is because A, white penguins are just ridiculously rare, and to find one that clean, I'd be scared to take that one out of the house. Looks like over at the Jimmy Wallace booth, we have an interesting Ibanez guitar. It's almost slightly less Paul in shape, but yet a little bit longer right here. The bound F-holes, we've got the floating mini humbuckers, one attached to the neck right there, and apparently it might have belonged to Chris DeRose. I can't say I know too much about this one to really comment, but it sure does look fancy. What do we got here? Some import style guitars. So Tokai and Edwards, they're pretty high-end brands. These were initially meant for the Japanese market, if I remember correctly, because you can't sell these things brand new in shops in the USA for obvious reasons. Looks like we've got a Dan Electro, Jimmy Page style back there too. Got a couple of interesting things in this photo. A couple of Gretches if you're into those, but a 76 Les Paul Custom. 3850. It was only about eight years ago. That was like absolute top value for a minty one. But nowadays that's about what player's grade gets ya. This one's got uncovered pickups. Not sure if they're original or not. Can't quite tell from this photo, but it looks like a dark wine red. Nicely aged. Here we've got one of those 68 reissues. These were very common in the mid 2000s. Triburst is one of the harder colors to sell. But this one has a pretty spectacularly flame top. Can't quite read what that price tag says. Here's one of those ES-137s. We were just talking about the custom version in an unboxing episode not too long ago. There we can see that C inlay right there, but a nicely figured top. Looks like maybe a red J45 back here and some sort of a double O. But whoa, what is that thing? So that's a model that Gibson made as a signature indoor C. They kind of had the interesting F-holes. But this one, I, I, I don't know how this thing started life. If somebody put these split style pickups in here, if that's how it shipped from the factory. But then you've got these weird F-holes all the way down here on the guitar. That's an interesting one to see. Beautiful flame maple top Stratocaster over here, whatever it was. A Buck Owens Telecaster, 3200 bucks. So it looks like this one might have been signed by him or at least somebody, which is a darn shame they had to sign it there. Maybe they could have did it on the pick guard because that kind of ruins the whole vibe of that one. But oh, do you see what's over here? That's one of those 2017, 2018 Abalone Sparkles in like the gray pearl one. I can't quite see a price tag on that, but I do want to document one of those. They're pretty cool. But hey, looking in the background, that almost looks like a the Paul, but then when you look at the top of the headstock, it doesn't have the normal Gibson headstock. So that's potentially an invader because they have a headstock like that, or it's some other knockoff brand. Kind of hard to tell exactly from that photo. But then look at this thing. It looks like a regular kind of custom shop Gibson Les Paul custom, but look at those inlays. We've got like a wheel, a cactus, and a sword. <laughs> There's got to be a story behind that one. Well, speaking of invaders, here's one. You can see the headstock I'm talking about. Oh, wow, 1500 for one's kind of expensive, but a lefty invader? Yeah, that's pretty rare. And it looks like we've got some Univox, Aria, Conrad, 
and a lower end Gibson Sonics over here. Whoa, 1800 for one of those. But the saving grace for that one is at least it's the silver burst finish, which is a little bit more rare. But whoa, Kaylord, that, that's going to be a tough sell. I mean, maybe 12, but 18 at a show? I don't know about that. And then this is pretty cool to see. So it's a Les Paul Special Pro or something like that. I've got videos on these in both variations, the Junior and the Special. So you've got the slim bucker in the neck and the bridge. The problem is these trim systems are garbage from the factory. Like the posts bend, every single one of these, unless they've been repaired at some point in time, are just awful. They don't actually work at all. So you either have to fill it in, route it out for some other trim system. There's only one guy in the entire world that actually makes parts to retrofit these things. So if that's been fixed, you know, 18, that is a possibility. Those are cool guitars. I would love, 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 love to find one in stop bar variety that's in clean shape and I want atomic yellow because that's the coolest finish of those. Looks like we got a sweet double neck artist. You don't see those things too often of that vintage for sale. So far, the prices seem to be a little bit ridiculously high, especially for a guitar show. Because here's the thing about a guitar show. When I used to go to them, I would price things at very good cash prices. I wouldn't be trying to get retail on these things. If I went to a guitar show, it was to move some inventory. So it's always kind of weird when I see high prices like this one. It's almost like the dealer themselves were misled as to what this even was. It says 1957 Les Paul reissue, signed by Les Paul. That's the problem. This isn't a historic 57 reissue, not even like a prehistoric one. This is just a late 80s Les Paul special. They generally sell between 12 to 2200, depending on condition and how many are on the market. Generally, you don't see too many of these things. I mean, the fact that it's signed by Les Paul is great, but Les Paul would sign almost anything you would give to him. So his signature doesn't necessarily add much value. It's more so just a personalization thing as proof that you met the man. So 5,000 on that's just insane. Dang. But kind of a cool Telecaster in the background right there. Some sort of PRS SE rap tail. I like the bat pit guard right there. That's cool. The best thing about guitar shows is you really never know what's going to show up. And like guitars like these look cool, but this gives you the opportunity to try one before you buy one. And generally like that 500 and under guitar range, you want to try it before to make sure you like it. And it's just a lot cheaper to buy them at a guitar show because you don't have to worry about reverb fees or shipping or anything like that. Here it looks like we got one of those Gibson Victories. I've reviewed one of these. Now 3000. I mean, that looks like it's in pretty clean shape. Like if it's minty, okay, maybe. But you generally don't actually see these with the Kaler Vibrolas on them. They were basically Gibson's take on a Super Strat that was just a little bit different. So somebody might actually want a Kaler on that. But it looks like we've got some sort of a Zemitis here. You can check out the Flappy Pigeon review and demo. You heard me right, it's called Flappy Pigeon. Learn all about it, click the video. <laughs> A lot of guys were telling me, just try a vintage Zemitis. The new ones are nothing like them. And who knows, maybe one day we will. But here we've got another Tokai that looks pretty darn good. But you're probably wondering, hey, hey, hey three and a half thousand dollars, can I just get a real Les Paul? There is a big collector fan base of them. I mean, you gotta remember, this is vintage in its own right. And I've been told they're excellent guitars. I haven't actually had one of the older ones yet, though. So I can't give you my own opinions. If you can't afford or don't want to afford the Gibsons, single cut is the answer for all your searches. Here it looks like we got one of those Strat Plus slash Strat Elite things. I have done videos on these before. They are very excellent guitars. They've got the whole LSR style nut system on them. There's a few quirks to get around, but then once you understand them, they're just fantastic. But hey, check this out. 1988. Les Paul Custom Light. 100% original. 6500 labeled as stupid rare? Uh, I wouldn't say that. These things show up often enough. The hard thing is finding one in extra clean shape, and I can't judge that from these photos. It looks like it's been cleaned and polished, and the gold is in surprisingly great shape. You can tell it's got the original pickups because of the giant screws right here that tells us it's the Bill Lawrence, the original style pickups, which is interesting because generally I don't associate those exact pickups with this model. But yeah, if that's clean, 6,500, yep, a collector will pay that. But even some like high-end dealers come to these things. I mean, this is Guitar Center Platinum here with a $47,000 2004 guitar. <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughn number one. I'm not really sure what the current market is on one of these things, but I know it's probably somewhere around there because there's a lot of Stevie fans out there. Here's a cool one Guitar Center brought. It's the John 5 Signature Ultra Headstock Telecaster. You know, it's like the 12-string the version one, but 
not. But hey, I was surprised they brought one of these things out, the Johnny Winter Firebird. Hands down, the best Firebird I've ever personally played. It's just so far it seems the guitar buying public just didn't agree with the $9,000 price tag. Because there's still a few of them sitting around. But hey, I've got a killer deal on one of these if you want to message me. I mean, we're talking like $2,000 off. Here in the Les Paul reissues in T-Mobile, this is a photo to die for. <laughs> Lots of good stuff here. But holy Stratocasters, what do we got going on here? It looks like more Guitar Center stuff. I love the fact that they're just bringing all this stuff out to be flashy. So we've got a couple of those Master Artisan Stratocasters that you just never see in the flesh. It's only ever stock photos around the five and a half thousand dollar mark. Looks like a really sparkly silver one right there. That's pretty cool. And a couple of other just general colors. Looks like a 79 Les Paul Custom, four and a half. Not too bad if it's as clean as it looks. Looks like the, the burst on this one was a little bit wonkily sprayed, but <laughs> sometimes that happens in the 70s. 79s are great, I love that year. 78, 79, they just had something good going on. Looks like we got a couple of more newer Zomitises here. But well, this one says, please ask, so it must be an original. But it looks like Heritage Auctions was also at this, kind of showboat and some of their things coming up. So proto type. Gibson DG335. Super popular model, opening bid 4,000. That's a steal. But oh, it's the gold run. If you need to learn more about all the Dave Grohl series of signature guitars, check this video out right here. So this one appears to have been signed, early prototype, at least, at least 20,000. But there was like his initial run on Reverb not too long ago. I think they wanted 100,000 for it, but they took it down. Looks like they might be auctioning it off a vintage Stratocaster shortly. Some sort of a Rickenbacker I don't know too much about. Rivington usually has some interesting stuff, so a more basic Strat Plus. We've got an older Rickenbacker here. Then we've got one of those classic customs, which are Gibson USA produced. So they're not as high end as a Les Paul custom because they don't actually have the binding on the back and they were made at a different factory. But for whatever reason, people pay premiums for those. That's a beautiful 59 345. Lots of good finish checking on that one. And a one owner 56 Les Paul listed for a mere $65,000. Then we've got a 54 Eric Johnson owned Stratocaster. That's a weird way to present that one. It almost looks like it's a lefty. What's going on with that case? <laughs> but ooh, what is that? I thought for sure that'd be like a 68, 69, but no, that's a 1970. Looks like the price tag is just shy of 8,000. They polished that thing up awesomely. I think they're around the ballpark for the market of something like that, assuming everything's right. Then we've got one of the Heritage Series guitars at 75. The really nice ones can fetch that much. The awards fetch even more. Is that a price cut to 65? That's starting to get into, like, if you were looking for that guitar, that's not too bad of a price. 75 custom for 75? Yeah, I wouldn't suggest paying quite that much for one of those. But this thing has to be the best deal in the entire show. It's one of the Chad Kruger Nickelback signatures. Only 2,500 bucks. That is at least, at least a $3,000 guitar. Finding an attractive black water is very difficult, and this one is so heavily figured, it's got the darker finish instead of the lighter one. Now, of course, some of that comes down to the aging of the lacquer to make it look like that. And what makes these things interesting is, A, you can check out this video to learn everything, but they have a built-in piezo system, so you can get acoustic tones, and you can also blend it with the magnetic pickups. But 25 was a great deal, assuming there's not like a headstock break or something, you never know in the guitar show world. And hey, the Gibson, 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 Gibson Les Paul was also at the show. Ooh, wow, a 57 gold top. Looks well-aged. And potentially a real burst. You also have to be careful buying these things at shows because they could be conversions. But hey, what, what's great is you've got Eric Ernest somewhere at this show, so you can just go to him and be like, hey, is this real? Pay him for his time, tear it apart if you're going to make such a big purchase that day. You don't always have that luxury of having a 50s Les Paul expert just at the show. Well, this looks like some sort of like a, a 54 that's been routed for humbuckers. Looks pretty interesting for 50K. It looks way better at this photo angle. But then we have some Max guitars. So these are bootleg ripoffs, but really high-end boutique enough that they have their own cult following behind them. Like this is the guy behind Slash's like famous guitar. So that's why people pay crazy monies for these knockoffs. But sometimes they go crazy and like use real 59 parts. So that's why that thing's 30,000. And this one's 10,000, though I'm unsure of the story behind it. I can't quite read. 
Over here, we have a Les Paul recording and a Triumph bass. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not a recording. It's a predecessor to the recording model. But I'm happy to announce I actually found the rarest one of the recording family. We'll review and document that, but I'm looking for a gooseneck mic. Does anybody have a nice vintage gooseneck mic? I'm looking for one. And see, it's stuff like this, the Aria Pro 2. For 1350, you get like a, a Super 400 Jazz Archtop Box style guitar. That looks great with those inlays. If you think that's expensive, just remember th this guitar in Gibson formats like 10 times as much. Oh, and here's an L5S. I do have a review on one of these. Apparently, the guy who sold this to the dealer, he walked away in tears. He didn't want to sell it. That's such a sad story. He must need to sell it. But he ditched the original electronics, unfortunately, and uh, put a phase inversion or a coil splitter on there, as was popular back in the day. But that's a three-piece top with some decent wood grain. There was another interesting L5 at the show. 4500 for the early version. This one initially had low impedance humbuckers in it. But look, this has 72 T-tops in it with the gold embossing. <laughs> That is awesome. That's not a bad price either. There's something fishy going on here. Maybe there's a Kaler put into it at one point in time, which is just absolutely insane on a guitar like that. And we've got some replaced knobs, but that looks like a lot of fun. Here's one of those conversions I was talking about. So this is a 52, like 59, with real PAFs in it. And it's nice that they left the back finish alone and just refinished the top. So it doesn't look like any like retopping shenanigans. That's a pretty stellar looking 58 335. Looks like a cool vintage SG. And then this darn thing right here. You might think it's insane to pay $195,000 for a guitar. But if I was at the show and I saw that and I had that money kicking around at that point in time, I'd be like, all right, I told you guys I don't really want to own a Burst and I don't really have a reason to have one. But one that looks like that, even though it's a little bit more of a plain top, not insane, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So when I first saw this photo, I was like, ooh, do I need to sell a whole bunch of stuff? Do I need to sell my house and get this guitar? But thankfully, I had to hang up on my realtor here because it's been refinished. What? Why? I, I'm sure there's a story behind it, but no, that's not the original finish. So that kills that example for me. I'm sure if that was the original finish, then these are probably, what, more like 300, 400,000? thousand dollar type guitars nowadays and then hey we've got an explorer e2 i'm not sure if this is aired before or after but i do have an e2 explorer review coming up this is the walnut maple walnut version now interesting here's an older firebird 3500 generally that's what i've been buying my custom colored ones at but if you just want traditional yeah i guess that makes sense it's not too bad of a price i would definitely choose this 91 firebird over the modern day one but you might want to try the neck profiles out because these do have the very thin necks but here's one a little bit less expensive at 25 but remember different headstock oh and this one just upsets me so Wholesale guitars, they say they sell things at wholesale everything. Manufacturer, Chibson. Okay, at least they're being honest. But then our wholesale price, 650 with case. You can buy these on AliExpress for like 350 shipped to your door. Now I get it, they put a case in with it. Is it a good case or not? I, I don't know. But how can they say that's their wholesale price? I mean, you could buy these in bulk for like 200 a piece. I don't suggest it because you're breaking the law and it's not good. And technically it's illegal to sell these, but at least it's being advertised properly. But my rule of thumb is when somebody says, hey, should I buy this? What price should I pay? If you're gonna buy a Chibson, you shouldn't really be paying more than 400 bucks. And that's if things have been upgraded. Because at the heart, these are like Epiphone level quality guitars, a lot of times made at the exact same same factory as those other ones just on the off peak hours got a charlie christian tenor guitar nice not too bad of a price on that deluxe depending on what's wrong with it we've got one of those gary clark jr sgs now this is exactly what the u.s map guitars are for attention getting pieces and that's a really nice koa penguin those look spectacular in person and I think the best deal of the entire show was this thing. A Root Beer Les Paul Supreme, only 3,200. That's pretty good for a Supreme in today's market. I was all getting ready to tell him that he probably needs to go buy that, but in his synopsis of the whole thing, he thought that was a great deal too, and then he picked it up and there's a big head stock repair on the back. And I'm assuming this is the Supreme he was talking about. So, so far, I didn't see anything that was a steal other than the Blackwater, assuming that it was good. But I think that's just about gonna wrap up this 
episode. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, so we'll just flip through these photos in silence if you want to look at some more of what he saw at the show. But I hope you troglodytes enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.